since it's still Christmas, I'm going to be reading a few chapters from the Christmas section of my new book, Cracking Up a Postpartum Grief Crisis. The first Sunday of Christmas. The boy slept eight hours last night. I didn't even enjoy it. I kept waking up anxious and afraid, certain I was developing a chronic condition, a fatal one, like lupus or MS or meningitis. So stupid, such a waste of time and energy. I tell Doug over tea that my arms ache and burn, but it's a cold burn, I say, like icy hot or Ben Gay, only inside. He nods, takes a sip, tip, takes a sip of tea and says, probably arm cancer. I hear there's an epidemic of that going around. I blink, really? He looks at me hard. You're kidding. Yes, I manage a weak smile, mostly. Our lives are good. He reaches over to place his hand on my forearm. I know, I almost wail the words. I know, that's why I'm so freaked out. I'm barely okay with life being so good. What will I do if something awful happens? He squeezes my arm and smiles at me. So you're creating things to worry about? His voice turns gently teasing. How is that helpful? He's right, of course, on both counts. I'm creating things to worry about and it's totally not helpful. Two months ago, I was freaking out over my milk supply, which is clearly fine, but I needed something to blame for this anxiety that's filling my body with its icy, tingling fingers. Now that my milk isn't in any danger, I need something else to blame. Why can't I just blame the sleep, de sleep deprivation and the fact that I'm nursing two babies and have no appetite and can't get enough calories in my body, as Susan is constantly reminding me? Why do I always go straight to hypochondriac hell? Doug and I get dressed, we get the twins dressed and help Jane find her shoes and Jack his jacket and it takes 45 minutes just to get everyone out the door, but finally we all pile into the sofa mobile. At church, when I see Susan, I tell her about my arms, how they feel weak and shaky. It's a blood sugar issue, she tells me of my shaky limbs. What have you eaten today? Two biscuits with Nutella and an egg and three cups of tea. Oh, for heaven's sake, Kimberly, that's like 150 calories. You're feeding two babies. You need to eat four times that much for breakfast. But I have no appetite. The anxiety lives in my chest and stomach, sitting there like a boulder and leaving no room for food. I sit in the sanctuary in my customary third pew, nursing Luke and wishing I could stop the anxiety, could just decide not to feel anxious anymore. But I've tried over and over again, and to no avail, it just sits here crushing me. Renee is preaching this morning. She reads John 8. Then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed in him, If you continue in my word, you are truly my disciples, and you will know the truth, and the truth will make you free. She looks out at us and smiles. The truth will set us free, and the truth is that God is with us. That is the promise of Christmas. This is the truth that gives us freedom, and that is why we can trust God in the midst of our pain and our limitations, because he is with us. I am trying to trust and believe that. I am trying to trust God in the midst of this, trust that he is faithful and true and real, and I am trying to be faithful, trying to use my anxiety and fear as a call to prayer and scripture recitation. I am clinging to God with the small strength that is in me. Renee says, the circumstances of our lives cannot block the purposes of God in our lives, and God will work out those purposes. This is our hope. She emphasizes those words hard, and I write them down. God is who he says he is, and he is truth, and truth sets us free. All our hope is in Christ, she says. He is the light of the world. He is the God who is with us, and he is the truth who sets us free. In my journal, I write it big, Renee's words that speak to my quaking heart. Trust God in difficulty, in pain, in doubt. I'm trying. Oh God, I'm trying.